Hey, it's Avi, and today we're digging up three minor chord progressions that you can use for your next project, or song, or piece, or whatever it is. But that's not all. Like my last chord progressions video, each of these progressions share something in common. They share a secret, but you'll have to wait until the end of the video to find out what that is. If you're new here, welcome. Great to have you here. Hit the subscribe button and bell below for more videos, videos? For more videos helping you just write music. Okay, let's set up some parameters. Like the title says, these are all gonna be in a minor key, but modal borrowing and chromaticism is allowed. For each progression, we're gonna go over the chords themselves, we're gonna go over how the chords function and why the progression works as a whole. Let's take a look at our first minor chord progression with a secret. The first thing you might have noticed is the chromatic movement in the first three chords. A chromatic movement is when we're just moving up or down by half step. So in this case, we went from the E minor to the E flat major seven to the D major seven. Another cool thing about this chromatic movement is that the minor seventh in our first chord, the E minor seven, this right here, this D natural, this also acts as the major seventh in the E flat major seven chord because it's just a half step down. But instead of the note moving, the chord is moving around it, changing how it functions. Well, not how it functions, it's still a seventh, but it's in a different quality and it's on a different root. The seventh chords really help us create a vibe here, particularly something jazz oriented to my ears. Now it's pretty safe to say that we're in the key of E minor right here. That B dominant seventh at the end really gives it away. So E minor seven would be our one chord. Cool. That makes D major seven our seven chord. That C sharp that's acting as the major seventh in this D major seven chord is kind of flirting with Dorian here a little bit because that should actually be a dominant seventh chord, but we don't want to use a dominant seventh chord because that'll make it feel a little bit too much like G. And that B seven really brings us home to the dominant, the five chord. But what about that E flat major seven? What about that? Well, I think this is acting as a chromatic passing chord. The E minor seven and the D major seven are definitely diatonic with the D major seven maybe having a little bit of modal borrowing going on. But the E flat major seven, it fits chromatically right in between them. And by adding that major seventh, we create that shared chord tone between all three chords because the D is also the root of the D major seven chord. Look at that, isn't that cool? It's more common for these chromatic passing chords to be diminished or to be a dominant seventh chord, but it passed the ear test as a major seventh chord, so it stayed a major seventh chord. I think this progression works because we are hinting at and implying a much less tonal experience than we actually get by the end. We have this chromatic passing chord, which is like not very tonal, right? But by the end, we just have a B7, it's just a dominant seventh chord, a classic half cadence. That's as tonal as you can get. A half cadence is when we end a progression on the dominant of the key. In this case, the B dominant seventh chord, which is the five, the fifth of E. I guess this technically means we're in harmonic minor though, because the B dominant seventh has a D sharp in it. That creates a leading tone, this guy. But it's still minor, so we're good. So we get this really fun chromatic feel while still using our fundamentals. Super cool. What did you think of this progression? Let me know down in the comments. On to number two. I love this chord progression, mostly because of its simplicity and that feeling of reaching, toiling dread that it evokes. Every chord here feels unanticipated and surprising, even though we're just using regular old minor chords. This progression seems simple, but actually has a little bit more going on than you might think. Let's say we're in D minor for this. That makes D minor our one chord. Okay, easy peasy. And F minor is some kind of three chord, but it doesn't quite fit the bill. It's not a normal three. Now we're in a minor key. Normally the three chord is a major chord, 
not a minor chord. Conversely, in a major key, normally we have the three as a minor chord. But something curious is going on. A major three is a half step above a minor three. So if this was a major chord in a minor key, it would have to be this F sharp minor over here. But it's an F minor. It's diatonic to the minor key, but it should be a major chord, but it's a minor chord. What the hell is going on? This F minor is an altered chord. This is when we take a chord tone that's diatonic to the key or scale, it falls within the key or scale, and we replace it with a non-chord tone from the chromatic scale, which has literally all 12 notes in it. In this case, we're substituting this A natural for an A flat and calling it a day. And that one change is the difference between an F major and an F minor chord. So what about this A flat minor chord? Where does this come in? Well, outside of saying it sounds cool, so who cares? One way to explain this functionally is similar to the F minor we just looked at. It's another altered chord, but in this case, we're altering a chord from another scalar key rather than altering the chord from the scalar key that we're in right now. We're borrowing the A flat from D Locrian. So modal borrowing there. But that flat five chord should be a major. So we're altering it to make it minor. There are other ways to interpret this, I'm sure. This is just the one that I landed on. Like I mentioned earlier, it kind of doesn't even matter because it passes the ear test. Another cool thing about this chord progression is that the roots of each chord actually outline a diminished triad. D, F, A flat. This chord progression is effective because of just how out there it sounds. Everything feels like it's in conflict with each other. It feels like we're reaching up, climbing a cliff face or something, and as we reach our hand up right at the cliff face, we grab a piece of rock and it falls away from us. That sort of reaching, toiling feeling. Nothing in this chord progression seems like it's operating normally, and that's what makes it killer. Great, that's progression number two. Let me know your thoughts down below. Let's go on to progression number three. I'm a sucker for nine chords and for sus chords, so this one is obviously my favorite. Every chord feels like a natural extension of the last one. And then we hit that last chord and it's like, boom, bam, what, what just happened? How should I feel? What should I feel? Tell me. But it's not just the chord qualities at work here. We're really just doing a B minor chord progression with a little bit of modal borrowing on the last chord. That means that B minor chord, that B minor add nine is our one. The D sus two is our three chord, major three, totally fine. Not a problem. E minor seven is our minor four in a minor key. Totally fine again. Pretty standard, diatonic, all good. Okay, so we have one, three, four so far. That's fine, not a problem. But where does that G sharp sus two come in? I love this voicing too, because we have that second right there at the beginning. Beautiful. G sharp is actually just borrowed from B major, the parallel major to B minor. A parallel mode is when the modes share the same root, in this case B, but it uses a different scale on top of it. B major, B minor, B Dorian, something like that. Those would all be parallel modes. So functionally, this is just a minor six chord in a B major key, G sharp minor, except we're utilizing it in a B minor chord progression. And finally, we're just changing the quality to a suspended chord which adds to that vagueness and that nuance of feeling. Coming from that E minor seven, it's both bright and reaching, but also vague and nuanced and obfuscated. Well, there you have it. Those are my three minor chord progressions. Go ahead and use these if you feel like you liked them or just if you like one of the chords or one of the motions and you were like, whoa, that sounds dope. Please use this now. It's time to reveal that secret. Each of these chord progressions all shared the use of a third or mediant 
relation. This is when the roots of two chords are separated by a major or a minor third. A mediant is the functional way of referring to the three chord, so referring to jumps of a third is sometimes referred to as a mediant relation. I've also heard and learned and used the term third relation. They're describing the same thing. In that first progression, the D major seven is going to the B dominant seven. B and D are a minor third away from each other. Beautiful. That second chord progression was literally all thirds. It was all minor thirds right after another, right? Because two minor thirds stacked on top of each other is a diminished triad. So these were just, this was, this was all minor thirds. This was all median relations. And in the final progression, we have the B going to D again, except this time it was our B minor add nine going to that D sus. But we also had the E minor seven going to a G sharp. E and G sharp are a major third apart, and B and D, like the first progression, are a minor third apart. If you're looking for a fun and helpful way to bring even one of these progressions to life in your own music, check out my three-step song starter. It's a free one-page PDF that's simple, easy to understand, easy to use, easy to read language. It's really easy, and it gets you writing really fast. It's also fun, because music and writing music should be fun. That was a little intense. It's guaranteed to get you writing in just a few minutes. Head to justwritemusic.com slash songstarter. There's a link down in the doobly-doo. Thanks so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. What did you think about these chord progressions? And what did you think of the stuff that I did to them in like the examples? Let me know down in the comments. Will you use one of these progressions in your next project? I think it would be super cool if you did. Thanks again. It's great to have you here. I'm Avi. Don't forget to be awesome.